engine bleed. We're joined by Philippe Delu, the manager of the Orion European Service Module Program. He's been at the launch site at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida uh, today, which I suppose turned out to be, uh, Philippe, an anticlimax, but uh, something which ought to be, we hope, maybe come Friday resolved. Yes, we hope. I mean, it's in the hands of NASA. Um, yes, it's uh, it's a deception for us. We were trying to, well, we were hoping to see our system flying. But uh, unfortunately, the RS-25 engine, which are engines uh, inherited from the shuttle and proven to be reliable for some reason, had a technical problem with the bleed, as you said, uh, one of the engine didn't bleed. And therefore, the cooling of the thrust vector control of the engine uh, was not functional. Uh, Philippe, there'll be, there'll be some of our viewers and listeners uh, surprised to know that there is a big European uh, involvement in this NASA program. It's a reminder, I suppose, that um, space exploration is hugely costly, at least when it's done by the public sector in this instance, and that collaboration like this has been going on for years. That, that is correct. We have built up collaboration with NASA uh, from very, for a very, very long time. And uh, this collaboration has developed further with the International Space Station, where uh, Europe built the automated transfer vehicle, which was a cargo uh, resupplying the, the space station with fuel um, and uh, cargo for the, for the crew. And uh, we demonstrated there the uh, quality of the European technology. And uh, uh, we demonstrated to NASA that we could be uh, very reliable partners. That's the reason why about 10 years ago, uh, we got together to discuss the possibility of us participating to the Orion crew vehicle and providing the service module, which is effectively the, the powerhouse of the Orion vehicle. Uh, Philippe, it's, it's possible to look at the, the way this rocket looks with the, the escape rocket and the Orion module and your service module, and to see a rocket which, in terms of its the engineering principles behind it, is not all that terribly dif different from uh, the Saturn V rockets of more than 50 years ago. Tell us, explain to us if you can, why actually looks are deceptive and this is a much more advanced piece of equipment. Well, I can't talk too much about the, the rocket, the SLS rocket, because I'm not part of it. Uh, it's, it's different uh, for, for many reasons. Um, let's say the vehicle, and I'm going to talk about the, the Orion vehicle, which I, I know much better. The Orion vehicle is significantly different than the Apollo uh, crew module um, because we want to have a sustainable uh, exploration um, and we want to be able to stay longer in space with the, the, the Orion vehicle. For instance, there is a plan to have a, a station in the moon vicinity called the Gateway and the Orion vehicle will have to dock to this uh, Gateway and stay there dock for a number of weeks or, or months, which was a requirement which didn't exist at the time of Apollo. Apollo had a very fixed mission, going to the moon, uh, land on the moon, stay there a few days, a couple of days, and then go back. So it was a total of a, of a couple of weeks mission where the, where the astronauts were, um, let's see, surviving based on what they brought from Earth. Um, okay. In our island, we try to use as much as we can f with what we have in space, for example, for so solar rays, actually, providing it, electricity. 